you know? Antiderivatives, aka integrals, aka losing them. Getting them. Okay. Uh, but right now, we are going to approximate the area under this curve, which is the function f of x is negative x squared plus 5. It is bound by x equals 0, so that's saying that we start right here on the y-axis. And we're going to end where x equals 2, so we're not going to find all the area under this curve. And we're going to use four equal, what we call, left-handed rectangles. So, is... Huh? Oh, I forgot to change those. Change it to four. Okay, change it to four. I'm sorry. Um, on your paper, it says five. But I want it to be four because it's very difficult to split up the interval from zero to two into five equal intervals, right? Let's do four. I apologize. I keep on meaning to fix that every year and I forget. So if we're going from zero to two and we want to use four even intervals, how long are our intervals going to be? A half. Okay, so here is what a left-handed rectangle means. It means we're going to start on the very left side of our interval on the curve, and we are going to draw a rectangle with a height of that y value right there. Now, obviously, this is above the curve, so we're going to end up with somewhat of an over approximation. So then we go to the next point, point 5. We go to its y value on the curve. We draw a rectangle that is half a unit wide that has a height of the y value there. You mean if you went below for the next one? We don't mix and match them. But it could somewhat kind of balance things out. But you, you'll see. We're, we're going to look at several different ways to approximate. Okay. Then we go to the next y value on the curve. Draw its rectangle. And the next y value on the curve. And draw its rectangle. Okay. So, huh? Does it make sense how we're drawing the rectangles? Because once you've got that part, it's pretty easy to come back. So we've got to make sure we're, we're clear on that. So you start with five. Like, you went halfway. What do you mean, halfway? Halfway. Yeah. Well, we, we have the actual curve. We're going to find what these, these actual values are using the function. I didn't just pick that it was, I, I meant to, if this is where my interval's starting, I go up to that point on the curve that I'm looking at. That's how I determine my heights. Okay, if, if for some reason I had an interval here at 1.25, then I'd go to where 1.25 is on the graph. Don't be crazy. Collaborating, you should chill out. Um. Okay, so we are trying to approximate the area under the curve, so we need to add up the areas of these rectangles. Um, area of a rectangle is length times width, so they are half a unit long. The height of this first one is 5. You can see that on the graph, um, but you could also figure it out by plugging 0 into the function. So the area of that piece is what? Uh, 5 halves, or 2.5. Okay. The second piece has the same width, 0.5. Its height, how do we figure out its height? It looks like it's about 4.75. We plug 0.5 into the function because our interval was at the x value 0.5. So its y value right here is what gives us the height of this function. So f of 0.5 is equal to negative, and I'm going to use one half because I would rather square fractions than square decimals. So that is one half squared is one fourth. You square the top, you square the bottom. And I'm going to express five as something over four. Well, that'd be 20 over four. So that is 19 over four. 
And when I multiply that by a half, that gives me 19 over 8. I'm just going to leave it in fractional form right now. Because that's the width of the rectangle. We're finding the areas of these rectangles. Okay, the next one, its width is still 0.5. Its height, we plug 1 into the function. Well, negative 1 squared is negative 1 plus 5, so that is a height of 4. You can see that pretty clearly on the graph. So that piece has an area of 2. And then our last piece still has a width of 0.5. Its height, we plug 1.5, or 3 halves, into our function. So that is negative 9 over 4. So that gives us 11 over 4, which when we multiply is 11 over 8. And let's see, if we add all these together, I'm going to turn 2.5 into a fraction, so I can do that. Um, 5 halves as something over 8 would be 20 over 8, plus 19 over 8, plus 16 over 8, plus 11 over 8. Uh, what's that? That's 30 and 36, so that's 66 over 8, and those are both divisible by 2, 33 over 4, and let's see here, was that 4, 8, 8.25, 4 goes into 33 8 times with 1 left over, why did I not make a rectangle all the way this piece? Because it told me that it was down by x equals 2, so it told me uh, to stop. Okay, so those are left-handed rectangles. I'm going to set the next one up. Same curve, same boundaries, um, same number of partitions. That's another word that we use there. If it says five on your paper again, please change it to four again. Okay, I apologize. But this says it says right-handed triangles. Right in a triangle. So that means we're going to start on the right side of our interval. Okay, we're going to start on the right side of our interval. So our first rectangle looks like this. We start at 2, find its y value, draw to the left. Okay, then at 1.5. And then one, and then 0.5. So where the left-handed rectangles were an overestimation, the right-handed uh, rectangles are going to be an underestimation of our area. Um, now we already found this piece. Let's see here. That one was what when we plugged in 0.5. What did we get? 19 over 4, and when we plug in 1, we get 4, when we plug in 1.5, what do we get? Can I ask you this, please? A couple of meetings I uh, need to announce for Starbucks. Fourth. First off, if you and a cheerleader, JV or Marcy, you must attend a meeting in my room, room 10, at the start of Smart Lunch, part A. Come directly to my room, all cheerleaders. If you're a senior going on the senior trip, you need to meet in the media center for a very important brief meeting, part A, today. And the tennis team needs to meet in Mark Parsons' room, part B, today. Again, if you are a cheerleader, you must attend the meeting in my room at the beginning of Smart Lunch. Thank you. So this gives us 50 over 8 which 8 goes into 56 times with 2 left over, uh, so that's 2 over 8, 1 fourth, so this is 6.25. Okay, so 